Hey guys, Gretchen here with um, Celtic Reiki. So this is going to be our first symbol, Arlem. Celtic Reiki is unique. I'm flipping over to my notes. You guys know how this goes. So Celtic Reiki is unique in the um, aspect that these symbols were already in existence. So what do I mean by that? These symbols were in existence in the Celtic tree Ogham, O-G-H-A-M. <clears throat> Pardon me. These are tree runes. Um, they are, they go back to the Celts, to the Druids, to the Bards, to the Obates, um, all of the natural healers. They know, <clears throat> pardon, I don't know what's going on with my throat. So they are also called the Ogham Fuse, known as tree runes or druidic runes. They're a wonderful tool to help sentient beings heal, make decisions, grow, handle problems, transform energies, and evolve. Sounds a lot like Reiki, huh? So this is Reiki before Reiki was Reiki. Um, energy healers, druids, Celts, using the uh, gifts from nature around us has been around for as long as we have been around. Reiki is not a new thing. Energy healing is not a new thing. Um, it's making a revival, which I am so happy about because, I mean, we need a, definitely need more love and light out there, right? So we find the trees being named along with their attributes. And this is on the Ogham part, not the Reiki part. We'll get back to the Reiki part in a minute. We find the trees being named along with their attributes in the Welsh Battle of the Trees, or Cad Gado. Um, Robert Graves, in his book, The White Goddess, saw them as a poetic system of spirituality. Some claim they were an everyday script like a regular old alphabet. Others said that they were a sacred script like Hebrew or Sanskrit, um, while others claimed that they were a powerful system of magic in their own right, like their cousin, the Teutonic runes. Um, and I, I pull Elder Futhark runes, which is a whole other room. <laughs> they have a presence even in fantasy literature. Ursula Le Guin in her Earthsea trilogy hints about them when she discusses the sacred grove of trees as part of this magical world. So druids and obates were known to practice their herbalism and their healings in groves of sacred trees or trees that were considered sacred to them. These are trees I believe were giving their healing energies as well as Llewellyn, um, Martin Llewellyn found out, discovered while he was channeling the Reiki, the Celtic Reiki. It's called Celtic Reiki. I it should really definitely be called like Obate Reiki or Sean uh, Druid Reiki, but I didn't discover it, so I didn't get to name it. Anyway, where was I? All right, da da da. Present, many serious, dedicated um, Druids, Mages, Reikis are researching and reconstructing their purposes and uses. So basically, reconnecting with those powers that be. Uh, Druids use trees to represent universal forces and archetypes, um, which you will see each of these uh, symbols, each of these agams has a different type. And when you meditate on it, you're going to meditate on them just like any other Reiki symbol. Um, so we're going to go through the tales of um, um, the silver fir or the Scots pine, December 22nd, so tomorrow, y'all. Second day of winter solstice and happy solstice to those of you celebrating. It, it signifies the beginning of the new year, um, the letter A as well. The animals are crow, a piebald, or a lapwing, um, and the color is light blue and black. I love light blue. Lore and legend. Alm is thought to mint pine tree, although in the Ogham tract it refer is referred to as the fir tree. Both trees are often interchangeable due to their similar appearance and qualities. The Ogham is about impetus, breaking new ground, and motivation. It promotes perspective and clear-headedness. Its energy helps to overcome knotty, K-N-O-T-T, -T, like a tree knot problem, and stuck in circumstances. So basically blockages of energies, right? In the human body, those knots, those K-N-O-T knots, would be blockages in your energetic system. Um, the pine is associated with the winter solstice today, and it is commonly used to decorate the pine tree for Christmas. Um, with its red trunk and evergreen needles, the pine stood out across the bleak and gray landscapes of the northern winters. It pr its prominent vitality and hardiness promise that life continues through the harshest of seasons, and that in the darkest of times, the sun's journey has already begun to swing towards the earth once again. 
Its reputation as a tree of regeneration also has practical manifestation when cut down. The tree may appear dead, but new stems will still still grow through um, will still grow from its roots. The tradition of decorating the tree at the winter solstice uh, goes back a millennia to when the spirits of the tree was honored and asked to bless and support the people through the cold season, conveying its vitality upon them. So uh, originally Christmas trees were decorated not only as offerings to the animals of the forest, but also as an offering to the tree itself saying, hey, I'm going to make you so pretty. I'm going to have all these animals come visit you. Will you please shoot some of your beautiful healing energies my way? And we've lost um, connection with our with nature. We've lost connection. We are all one. We can definitely communicate with them. Trees know who they like and who they don't like. They'll crowd in on the ones they like, and they'll back away from people they don't like. They read your energy when you're walking through the forest. Science will back me up here. All right. In Scandinavia's Viking era, its branches uh, were brought indoors and decorated to entice or honor the spirits of growth as return in the spring as forebears to the modern Christmas tree. Pine was also used to decorate the Yule log, which was usually oak or ash. Um, although Yule log is now associated with Norse Yule, it, it was, it thought was, ah, it is thought that this was part of the continuous practice from much earlier times and cultures. The fragrant pine was often burnt at the winter solstice, its fumes purifying the air, stimulating the circulation, refreshing the mind, and clearing the house energetically. Um, so this time of year, especially today on winter solstice, it's encouraged that you burn a little bit of pine or burn a little bit of pine oil in your oil burners and really use that to cleanse your house and get those beautiful winter, new year kind of energetic um, energies that rebirth energy getting flowing through your entire home. That'd be nice, right? Um, the Scots pine and its silver fir rise above their heads of other trees in the landscape and are used by shamans to assist in the envisioning of the upper realms. The tree also serves as lookouts, giving a view of the distant horizon, even across wooded areas. The pine's association with regeneration and resurrection, together with their magnificent height, naturally suggests a connection with the upper shamanic realms or your upper chakras. Um, Om is recommended to use not only on your third eye, but on your sacral chakra. Uh, the, where are we? Uh, Gwynfid realms, upper realms, the seat of the gods known as Gwynfid in the Welsh Celtic tradition. Gwynfid is accessed, accessed by many means, often assisted with bird spirits, but by visualizing the pine or fir tree and asking for permission. Um, the upper realms can be accessed by the means of imagining yourself Climbing the branches, climbing the branches, so this goes with that, um, really getting into it, getting into that meditation. So while you're meditating on the symbol Om itself, I recommend or invite you to really meditate and climb the tree a little bit, sit with the tree a little bit, talk to the tree a little bit in your meditative mind. See if you can really get those vibes to go with you, and if you have time, grab some um, for some pine leaves or needles um, or some oil and if you have it in your oil collection and burn a little bit today in honor of the or tomorrow I guess we make more sense because tomorrow's its actual day today is solstice but tomorrow it's December 22nd because it signifies the new year um, the word agam for this tree is the weaver's beam the pine helps the seeker perceive the web the warp and weft of life patterns and events um, so you'll start to see more how interconnected we are. You'll begin to pick up on patterns more easily, and you'll begin to separate yourself from lower vibing situations a lot more easily. This is definitely one to be used on your clients and yourself, your home. If you have a habit of giving people a million chances, um, beating a horse not only until it's dead, but until it's become glue. If this sounds familiar, if you are the big love bug who gives your whole heart and gets really limited back. This will help you see who you just need to cut loose. Not everybody's meant to stay in your life. Very few people are meant to stay in your life. In all honesty, people feel like you need uh, a, basically like a whole entourage. You really don't because those energies are energies that you're picking up too while you're trying to heal. As a healer, you should be, be particular. You're a rare breed. You should not be accessible to all. 
Um, we should definitely not be accessible to all. All right, so Taliesin's God Godot reveals the fir is uncouth and savage in contrast to the courtly pine. So it can therefore be seen that the Agam Om represents the key to transforming ignorance and inexperience, the passive victimhood of a lack of perspective. So sometimes we feel we're victims because we don't see the perspectives in which we are not the victim. Um, into, it turns all of that, turns that ignorance, the inexperience, the passive victimhood because of the, uh, the lack of perspective, and it turns that into clarity, wisdom, and ability, and effectiveness. Um, all right, so now I'm going to get over to what the Reiki thing says, because they basically say the same thing. I have water in my ear. Um, Alm is of the silver fur. It helps to clarify vision and helps to see the way forward, the horizon. So maybe see different perspectives, see patterns, and break away from those that are holding you back, those lead weights to your balloon. Um, let's see, breaks down barriers to the lessons learned in this life and in other lives. Celts uh, believe in reincarnation, much like the Hindi. Increasing wisdom from the past. Wisdom from the past, not necessarily even the past from this life, but past lives that you may have had. So to like access, access that Akashic record and go, hey, so boom, you've already done this lesson. Boom, this is what you saw. Boom. You know, and just throw all of these thing at, things at you and you're like, dude, I did. Why do I keep doing this? Yeah, I'm done with that for sure. This is like definitely the last straw. And then you are actually done with that this time. Wouldn't that be nice? Okay. Increasing wisdom from the past. Increasing the connection to Celtic wisdom and binding this to solving current issues in your life. This energy is particularly useful in looking to the very distant future and areas such as your life path or life's work um, help integrate a person with their purpose. It can also connect the user to their Celtic ancestry if it's appropriate. Um, best use, use it over your brow and sacral, so your third eye and your sacral, to bring the past to your awareness. So this will definitely, this one is, I, I love this one, just meditate on it um, tomorrow. Maybe burn some pine oil tomorrow while you're meditating on it. Uh, picture yourself climbing the tree after you imbue it into your, um, if you sink it into your hands. And we'll be doing the, the attunements um, in groups. <laughs> we'll definitely be doing the attunements in groups. So this is going to also maybe attune you more to that, that really ancient a really ancient ancestral Celtic wisdom, even if you're not of the uh, Celtic bloodline, uh, just you're still one with that tree. You are still one with the silver fir. You are still one with the pine tree. So you would still have the ability to access that wisdom. I might throw this out there too, because a lot of people feel like they may not be able to access that Celtic wisdom because they may not feel like they're Celtic. So the Celts, the Druids, the Tuatha de Dunan, the, um, they're, they're a whole bunch of uh, people, healers, they traveled, they did travel. There are tales that say that Cleopatra, her grandmother, had red hair and traveled with the tall people, the tall magical people from Ireland, basically. So Cleopatra, theoretically, was also Celtic. <laughs> um, like I said, that's a rumor. I haven't done any research into that at all on my own. I have not pulled anything at all. So that's just heresy. I don't take my word on that one. But it would be fun to think about, right? These, these tall, like, regal redhead being Cleopatra's grandmother, which is really weird because I'm pretty sure for a period of time, if not still, redheads were considered, like, bad luck in Egypt. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed this video on Celtic Reiki on the symbol Alm. It's spelled A-I-L-I-M, pronounced Alm, Alm, okay? Um, if you do and you'd like to see more, please hit that subscribe button for me. And until next time, namaste and satnam.